Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. I'm visiting today with Helen Rosenthal, the council member from the west side of Manhattan, the sixth council district. The reason I'm anxious to talk to her is that she's really a person who not only understands the budget, but loves to work on the budget. Mm -hmm. And I am not known for wanting to do that or even for understanding it so totally completely. So welcome, Helen and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to talk to you. Thanks so much for having me on, Ronnie, and you know I love a good chart. Helen, we're in a major mess, right? Colossal. <laughs> Let's just say the budget, the fiscal year for the, for the city, unlike the state and the federal government, mm -hmm. is, June, is July 1st, it starts. July That's exactly right. right. So by the end of June, the mayor has uh, the mayor and the city council have to agree on what the budget will be for the next fiscal year and the three years after that. And there's a requirement that the balance that the budget be balanced. There are some really meaningful differences between the city versus the state and the federal government. The city has no ability to um, raise taxes on its own. They can only do that with state authority. The city has no ability to borrow on its own, that the state has to give us authority. And frankly, at the end of the day, the federal government can sort of print money, which is what they are doing now. Um, city has no ability to do that. So of course, during COVID, the economy has um, taken a dive. You know, in New York City, over a million people are unemployed now, um, which is striking. Um, and the revenue, our revenue base for the city has collapsed. So the last time the city looked at the budget um, in January, we had a nearly $94 billion budget expenses equally revenues, right? Yeah. And um, now the revenue part of the leisure has dropped away. Right. We have a shortfall in revenues from taxes of nearly 10 billion. Right. On top of that, the state has already cut us $1 billion. We think they're gonna cut us another $2 billion. That would be a $13 billion shortfall. And then on top of that, the city of course is spending millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars on COVID, not all of which will be in reimbursed by mm -hmm. the federal government. So we're, we're trying to balance the budget with a $13 billion shortfall, I mean, that's over 10% of the budget. I worked at office management budget under Koch, Dinkins, and Giuliani, and there were tough years in and Koch was, and Dinkins. What was the budget Never. in Dinkins oh. when I was there? It's like 60? 30. 30 when I left, so probably 25 when you left. Right. And I remember when I left and it creeped up to 30 thinking that's outrageous. That's just completely outrageous. And here we are. Right. Now, why have we gotten so expanded? Well, a couple of reasons, I think. But I want to start by saying, again, back in January, before the revenue floor dropped out, um, the city was rated highly by mm -hmm. the markets. We had a double A one rating, which is the best de Blasio has ever had and better than Bloomberg. Mm. So we need to start with that premise. No one, I mean, the rating agencies in a way are all that matter because that's, that tells us how much it costs us to borrow money. They're the ones really looking at the books to see whether or not we have a good solid budget. So before the revenues dropped out from under us, we had a solid budget. And I- Let me just interrupt. We can't, ta we can't increase taxes, but we can borrow money. Nope, can't do either. 
Okay. We have to get state approval to do either of those things. So we are really at the mercy of the state and the federal government. The city controller said that, uh, you know, if we did all his cuts, we should just take all his cuts. So let's say for a second, they're all good. That mm -hmm. gets us a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where's the next 12 billion coming from? Right. And the Citizens Budget Commission just came out today with a list of cuts that totaled maybe a billion dollars. Okay, so great, we'll take all those savings. That's okay. $2 billion. Yeah. Now it's where's duplicate. the, yeah, well, and there are probably duplicates, of course. But I'm just saying, even if we did everything that people are telling the city to do, it, it gets us an eighth of the way to where we need to be. And so are we on the verge, enough. are we on the verge, like the Beam administration with the financial control board? You know, I, I the financial control board was something set up because the city was um, losing its revenue base. People were leaving the city at that time. Sorry about that, just moved my computer. Um, the city were, le the people were leaving the city. We were losing our revenue base and we were doing some funky financial things. And, um, and then it, things spiraled out of control. We're in a crisis and uh, the financial control board came in to monitor the city's budget because we weren't balancing it properly and we did have to borrow money in order to pay for sanitation, fire, police, um, education. It's a very different situation. And so what I would call for is a revenue review board mm -hmm. because expenses are not our problem. Revenues are our problem. I think the state should give us wiggle room to borrow money. And with that borrowing, there should be a revenue review board who's watching as the city's revenues come in. Who to appoints see that? When, I, Who I don't care, the governor, the controller, the city, every, anyone who wants to be on the revenue review board is more than welcome to join because the more heads thinking about what smart ways we can bring in new revenue, the better. And the easiest one, the easiest tax that I've been pushing for is to bring back the securities transfer tax. And this is, go ahead. This is one that's been on the books since 1905. And it wasn't until 1980 when the head of Chase Bank asked the governor to give an automatic rebate mm. for this tax so that brokerage houses are no longer taxed on the number of stocks and bonds traded. So why not just unwind the rebate bring that revenue in during these dark times when we have no other source of revenue and split it 50-50 with the state and the city. Tens of billions of dollars. It would solve the problem. So have you called the governor or the mayor to suggest it? I've written uh, in the nation about it uh, and I've brought it to legisl our state legislators I've brought it to the city council and to the mayor's office. Um, you know, I think it's something they should do. Uh, governor doesn't necessarily return my calls. He might return yours. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> All right, well, we'll talk about that later. But okay. Let's, uh, so let, let, let's start as if it wasn't such an abnormal budget cap, all right? Um, there are certain things that people always talk about, which are mandated costs. Yeah. What does that mean? That means that by law, we have to do these things. So for example, by law, we have to house the homeless. Mm -hmm. um, by law, they, you know, this is why we have 60, over 65,000 people in shelter now, because by law, we have to provide shelter to them. But what about the contracts and the pensions and mm -hmm. 
and Medicaid and things like that. Medicaid, Medicare, those are all uh, required for us to spend money on, debt service, so you're right. Pensions, yeah. all of our contracts we have to um, look at, I mean, have to abide by and fund. So for example, we're having a big discussion now, as you know, about defunding the police. Right. And we're thinking about, well, what would that mean? And what's the best way to think about that? And there's some low hanging fruit we can talk about in a minute. But the other day in a budget negotiating team meeting, we were saying, some people were saying, well, why not just uh, eliminate one or two of the new classes of recruits? So mm -hmm. when people attrit out and leave, they're not replaced. That's, yeah. Here's the problem. The new recruits are the ones that are the most diverse, are the ones who the come from community. And the least expensive, right? And the least expensive. <laughs> right. So then the question was put on the table, what if we offered early retirement um, um, options to yeah. get rid of the people who've been there for a very long time? And the answer is we need state law to even be allowed to do that. We are just such a creature of the state. We can't even offer early retirement to our police officers because there's a state law that prohibits us from doing that. And even if we did, it's still not gonna cover the budget gap. Oh yes, because for the sure. Police, the, and I think people are under the impression that the police is the, the police allocation and budget is the major part of the overall budget. And yeah, it's not, right? no, not even close. I mean, yeah. um, Department of Education is over $30 billion and police is six, debt service is what, 12 billion now? So yeah. there are a lot of- Right, and housing and, and all of the, I mean, that's, well, it's less, but anyway. Homeless services is more- Medicaid. Yeah. Our Medicaid outlay every year, hundreds of millions of dollars. I think the intention though of um, not funding the police is really a cry for reorganization. That's right. Police and, and what I agree. police department should be doing and shouldn't be doing. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Our neighborhood uh, policing officers, right? The neighborhood community program. Why do they have guns? Why? Right. Why? Right. They no reason they shouldn't. Why is the school? Why are school safety agents a part of the NYPD? They shouldn't be. Move them over to Department of Education, and that's the easiest thing you could do. Get Police rid are of in the, and the subways, aren't they? Get them the out of the subway. Get them <laughs> away from working with the homeless. Those should be the easiest things to eliminate. And today, the mayor said. He refuses to do that. I think it's a it's a real mistake. I think it's a real um, it's a misunderstanding. You know, it's a total misunderstanding or lack of understanding of what's going on and what people what should be done. Right? Exactly. I, mean, I think he's tone deaf. We still have police uh, monitoring all the vendors, the street vendors. It's and crazy why, with why guns, we, with and guns. Then we even have a vice squad. Now, what is the vice squad? <laughs> you know, so it is, it's all old fashioned and it's certainly not aimed at the kind of country we're looking at or that we are. I mean, why do you have police going for mentally ill people? I mean, I can understand the police because they may be violent, but you basically need somebody who's gonna understand the person, the mental health. Uh, they won't be violent if you have somebody come in who's de-escalating and skilled in that. So that brings me back to the budget. The mayor wants to cut summer programs, although I understand today he's modified that. Oh, oh, he wait, want, yeah. He wants to close, not open any of the city pools. Pools, I mean, it's everything to repress more people who are poor and of a color, I think and need the money or need the recreation facility. 100% agree with you, Ronnie. And let's be clear. And the division for youth, I'm sorry, I didn't mean right. to. Right, yep. 
And so this morning he made a big announcement with three different programs that would, that he's rolling out to uh, be, he's, he's saying it's even before the summer youth program. That's, that's how wonderful it is. So it will help 3,300 young people. The summer youth employment program that the city council has, has pushed for funding for the last, you know, at least as long as I've been on the council, six yeah. and a half years, has been a program to serve 70,000 okay. young people. Employment for 70,000 young people. And he has the nerve to come out today and expect us to be pleased that he's gonna roll something out for 3,300 young people, that's not even close to being enough. I mean, and it makes me wonder, what is, is he thinking? Is he, what's more important to him? The outcome or who it is that announces the program? That's In other a, words, the question. he is saying, <laughs> He's so proud because this is his initiative and he's willing to cut 70,000 young people from bringing in money to families that actually depend on it. Right. People should understand that it's not just to keep a kid busy. It's also to add to the family income. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I know I've uh, many different stories. CUNY students who do it in order to pay for their books. Mm -hmm. um, you know, many families, immigrant families, low-income families who are doing this in order to possibly pay for rent um, during the summer for their families. So it's, it's just devastating. It's not only is the situation devastating and life in the city is, is just under enormous strain, uh, but I think the needs that we have aren't being addressed even in future planning. You know, I mean, the housing thing is impossible. The mayor had big plans when he first became mayor with his big housing program, right? And we've got how many people? More than 60,000 homeless people, aside from people who need decent housing. Um, when we give tax credits to developers, Mm. And in the current market and situation, shouldn't we be, I mean, wouldn't they even be happy to get some business? Do we have to, do you know what I'm saying? I do. I mean, from a different angle. I, I mean, why aren't we exploring the idea of taking back those tax credits? Yeah. And I understand lawsuit, you had a contract, we're voiding the contract. This is, a, we're in a financial crisis. This is the definition of a crisis. And when you're in a crisis, yes, you know, if we're asking unions to come to the table and to make cuts to their, the health care that they fought so hard to provide to their workers or make salary cuts, why aren't we forcing real estate to come to the table to uh, give us the tax revenue that we need, they're making millions off of these luxury condominiums and they're not paying the full amount of taxes. I, and, but again, we're a creature of the state. It's up to the state to allow the city to do that. We've always been against having a constitutional convention. But if we were really properly organized and had planned, much planning into it. Isn't that what we really need to change the taxing and the ability of New York City? You know, the unions have always been opposed to it because they worry their union rules will be changed right. during constitutional convention. So, um, you know, it's, it's complicated. Um, but, you know, again, we're in the middle of a fiscal and a health crisis. Now's just the time to make meaningful change. You know, now's the time to integrate our schools. Right. Right? Now is the time. If you're not doing it now, I don't know when you're doing it. Let's just say that at the bottom of all this financial problem, 
is that we need to change the government in Washington because uh, for sure we need to work closer with the federal government for money. But let's go back to um, and I think Ronnie to that point to that exact point. I think um, the mayor is simply waiting for yeah. Biden to win in order to get federal relief. And I think fundamentally, when we pass the city's budget, of course, there will be changes to the NYPD. Of course, there will be some unfortunate cuts, but a lot will be papered over by sort of, you know, we think this money is going to come in from the federal government. The real crunch is going to come when the city literally is about to run out of cash. Yeah. That's that when the crisis rubber is right. going to meet the road. The other day, I interviewed a doctor um, mm -hmm. who talked about the difference in health care, but we really didn't get into the financing of hospitals and the way. Has there been a fundamental change, do you think, made? Well, I think that um, the it's only added to the economic crisis. Co what COVID has done is um, force hospitals not to have elective surgery, but yeah. to only provide treatment to those desperate in need. And of course they have to do that, mm -hmm. but they're not money makers yeah. for hospitals. And so because the reimbursement for treating a COVID patient is not particularly high, many of our hospitals are gonna go under because they haven't had any real income. I hate to tell you this, but we've come to the end of this program, so you you'll have to make a date with me to come back. I uh, would love to. Thank you always for having me on. It's such a pleasure chatting with you, Ronnie. And you'll come back after the budget is passed, and we'll see what else happens. Thank Great. you so much, Helen Rosenthal. Thank Look you. Look forward to it. Thank you. Bye.